Ability to solve a Rubik's Cube. Can you show us? Yeah. I'll Wait, I'm going to time you, it. okay? So do you have to mess it up? Yeah, I'll mess it up. I'll get the timer ready. Proof, proof that I'm not cheating in any way. It's already solved, so I'm going to. So is it, it ha, do you remember it or is it a system that had it? I never could figure it out. Yeah, so there's like. Um, I've only learnt one way to do it. Um, and I have just memorized how to do it that way. But there's like, m there's millions of different ways to solve it. And the people that can do it in like six seconds have memorized like hundreds of different ways to solve it and can just figure it out by like looking at it, like what the best way to solve it is. I can't do that. Um, and I'm not committed to learn how to do that. I just learned this one way. It's just mind blowing for me, and I, I, I never, I don't know if it was because I was a kid when they came out, but I never, I was lucky to get, like, I could do one side, mm -hmm. never could do two sides even. And the, the, the theory that I had learned, it was the same thing. It's just like one side at a time, but it's not. It's like one layer at a time. Well, ah, oh. so yeah. Oh, um, is it? Uh huh. And then oh. you complete it, and then you have to mess it up, and then to do the next one and then you have to put it back and it's very confusing. Oh. Um, I don't know how to best set this camera up so you can see it because I've got to hold it like that. Yeah, I'll, I'll put you over the big screen. Do you believe that it's jumbled up enough? I reckon it's jumbled up enough. Maybe I will go back here so we can keep an eye on this. Oh, my clock's not coming on. Here it is. Okay. Tell me when to hit start. All right. Ready, set, go. I'm feeling the pressure now. Mm -hmm. You said two minutes. We'll see. I can definitely do it in under five. <laughs> you just doubled at a half. <laughs> because we don't know that you're not swapping in a different Rubik's Cube that's already completed. <laughs> we want to see it. Oh, my God, it just got done like that. So two, two minutes 13, I think it was. Oh, yes. <laughs> that is almost as impressive as your musical talent. Um, have you take, are you taking your temperature regularly? I've actually got a thermometer on hand. We do. We have been every day. The thermometer will probably go flat. Um, I right know. In the time for us it, to actually get a fever. I bought this thermometer, and uh, actually, your mum did. You, your mum lent me a thermometer. Thank fuck on Facebook. I put a call out because we we're a bit did concerned. You? Yeah, and she said I'll leave it in the letterbox. Um, yeah, thirty six point five. So I'm um, just in case anyone's worried. But uh, the thermometer started malfunctioning the other day and it's been giving us all these really good readings. We're fe feeling pretty safe. And um, it gave me a reading of like 37.9, something like that. And I was like, what the get fucked? I didn't even feel hot. I was just out of habit taking my temperature. I fucking thought we all had corona. I was like, oh, my God, we're those people that get it without the symptoms. <laughs> oh, God, that would have been terrifying. What's your temperature? Your average temperature is at 36.6? .6? Yeah, roughly around that mark. Um, yeah. Well, one of us will get like 36.9 and we'll be like, Corona. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a totally normal temperature, but it's just like high. <laughs> exactly. I know. 
and that's what it's like. It's like 36.9. I'm starting to worry now. Like, and it's mm. like, that's actually like quite a healthy temperature. Half the time we're running cold. Yeah, exactly. Um, so mm. I, I see Stuart has released, had, well, Stuart released his own EP. Um, did you get yep. to have a listen to that? I did. It was my Christmas present from him. He gifted me a CD. And, oh, really? Uh, um, yeah. He, he just gave me one for free. Yeah, that was basically. <laughs> as well as a Christmas present. No, he didn't give me a Christmas present. But, um, yeah, this, you know, obviously that's a whole different style of, of music, you know, but um, he was in the process of putting together that huge bushfire appeal, um, which was going to be a huge marathon event, like it was going to be like 13 hours or something of, you know, local mm -hmm. music. Were you guys um, originally billed for that? Were you going to play there? I wasn't going to be able to get home for that one. Um, I why? I, I told you. What's I, um, I I started. Well, I was going to this year start playing footy, um, girls' footy, and that was going to be round one. Oh, who were you playing with? Um, I joined a club where I knew like friends of friends. Um, they were, that was my only connection to a footy club in Melbourne. So, Which club did you join? Um, they're called Whitefriars Football Club. Um, so I got to play one practice game and then they cancelled the whole season. So, so have you um, played much footy? No, never. Oh, really? So how do you yeah, think of it? It's pretty physical, isn't it? Even the girls. Yeah, very, very. Uh, got to have a mouth guard. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I played uh, women's footy back in, or this would have been in the early 90s, and uh, there really wasn't much of a league. And a friend of mine um, said, come down. We were playing somewhere like out at Seymour. We were actually travelling. And I remember I played a couple of games out there, but we played the girls from um, Pakapanyal. They were the army girls. And mm -hmm. this particular day, it pissed down rain like hail where it stings you um, the whole the whole oval just became a mud patch, and these girls were so fucking tough. Oh my god! Every time like the ball was coming in, I was just like, I, I don't even want to go for it. And then they just come mm -hmm. and smack you in the side and knock the wind out of you, knock you down. And um, my be my best memory, and I don't know if my friend Jody will remember this because she was playing. So Jody, if you remember this, was the umpire sending this big, really tough looking woman off the field because she kept giving him a mouthful. And as she ran off, she turned around and she flashed her boobs at him and she said, hey, umpy. And I was like, that's just so, you know, like taking feminism back so far um, because it's like, yeah, we want to play football, but this is, yeah, she flashed her tits and gave him a bit of a, a razzle and that and he's pointing her off and da, da, da. And the crowd went wild because it was like the, probably the most most um bit of action that had happened all day because yeah we used yeah. to play um like clubs like st kilda and uh, i don't even know if all that vfl or afl sides even had a had a team back then but um no. th there were games we went to where we didn't score yeah well they only started afl and vfl like a couple of years ago um for, for the girls um certainly wasn't around when i was growing up so no it's big now i think it, it is the most intense game physically don't you agree like yeah and you only touch the ball like five percent of the game and the rest of it like you are running and you're running it's yeah crazy. it's um yeah that's that's the hardest part i knew the hardest part for me was going to be the physical aspect of it because um i'm you know i've played golf for nearly 10 years i haven't <laughs> played any contact sports since like primary school soccer so um yeah or like athletic stays in high school like <laughs> the only time that I'd ever run so um picking that up was very difficult um, have you have you been smashed to the ground yet uh in a few training sessions when we were like learning to tackle where I was like one of the only new ones to the team for the year and I got tackled a couple of times what what, um, what did you think the first time you got like thrown to the ground I remember being shocked I remember, like, wondering if this was against the law. I thought I'd been I assaulted. I was shocked, shocked because I didn't see it coming. Um, <laughs> like, it was coming from behind me and I got caught. Are we caught? And, I, <laughs> and did they throw you down? I don't remember. It happened very quickly. It oh, was in training. 
And like I was unaware that in this fake scenario game that tackling was like now, okay, we're going to start tackling. And it was, it came out of nowhere. <laughs> And it was my own teammate, so it wasn't hard or anything, but I was like, yeah, shock. I was like, whoa. It's a bit of a shock, isn't it? Like, I think as girls, we don't actually, we don't play any sport like that, do we? No, um, like not traditionally. I think we will soon, though. I think it'll become a very normal thing. And it will be interesting, I think, because, you know, we know that blokes can play footy, you know, really until the mid, mid-30s. But it will be interesting for women because if they do want to stop to have children, there would have to be that hiatus in their career as well, you know. Um, yeah, I mean, that, really that, happened with, um, that happened with Daisy Pierce, the Melbourne football player. She went and had twins and had a season off and then came back this year and she's, like, incredible. Like, she's one of those, you know, top four in the team um, paving the way and, like, that's huge yeah like you know we've had some pretty pretty big deals do you remember that band young guns they were mentioned in parliament mm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, i wonder if uh, that'll be your highlight uh, yeah i know it was a big deal i can't remember why he mentioned it i don't know i think wasn't he just saying like hey like Check us this out. Yeah. Because you guys were like, I think, 13, 14 at the time. Um, we should play a clip because I don't think we've actually put done that to you yet, have we, where we've actually played a young yeah. Are you going to throw the stick throwing? Let's do the stick throwing part because I know it brings back warm memories for... <laughs> Can I add some context? This was the first film clip I'd ever filmed. How old was I, like 14, 15? 14. Trying to get some cool, you know, teen angsty shots, and I just really just struggled to throw this stick. And the best we got was um, this clip that Megan's. I'm gonna, I'm gonna quickly show you this clip now. Um, so will I show them back on track? Sure. Because <laughs> I have, I have located. I think last time we did talk about it, and we talked about how you were walking in the mud and all the rest mm, of it, but yeah. I didn't actually link it into the video. So this time I'll do that. rendition of Crying Shame. Right, here we go. 
picking up the pieces up off the floor. As I know, it's gonna be a war. Where's the song going? Where's the spy? Laying in my head, you're out through the night. Don't you know it's crying shame? When you get yourself to Thank you very much for joining us on SoCom. Um, if you want to check out Sharon, Sharon or Shannon, Sharon. it's late now, Sharon. it's very late. Um, if you want to check out Shannon, you probably can't because she's in quarantine, but where you can see her is on SoCom at the start of every episode with her latest release and her probably biggest hit that she's ever written so far, um, Coronavirus Edition for SoCom. So check her out. Um, Keep, keep, keep an eye on Shannon. We always do. Um, anything can change and uh, keep, keep quarantining. <laughs> Shannon, you're always a good sport. We'll talk to you soon, mate. Love you. Bye. See ya.